In this bubble tutorial video, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can create a product tour and onboarding experience just like this to guide your users through and explain features in your bubble app. Whether you're working on an MVP or you've got an amazing SaaS app idea, whatever you're building with bubble.io, uh, this is a tutorial to show you how to add an amazing uh, intro onboarding experience. And we'll be using this plugin here, the A+. Plus onboarding product tutorial plugin by Cranford Tech. Um, so let's dive right into the demo. I've got a simple um, SAS dashboard here, uh, which uses an option set and custom state to cycle through uh, different views. Uh, so like any plugin, we head to the plugin directory and uh, you can see that I've already installed the A plus onboarding and product tool plugin. Uh, once you've got that installed, um, like many plugins, you have to add in a element to the page. This is to ensure that the right scripts that run the plugin get loaded in for your users when they are browsing uh, your app. Uh, so I add in the product tour element and it's worth just taking a moment to pause and consider the options that we've got here, such as uh, the overlay effect, uh, whether we can uh, allow our users to go backwards and forwards through the app. Uh, we can change the labels for uh, the different buttons, um, but let's just go go right for it and uh, get an example. Uh, so I'm going to add a uh, general page is loaded workflow. And because I've got the element on my page, I can add in a add a step to a product tour. And so I could say welcome just say welcome to my app and then in order to actually run uh, the product tour I need to finish this with start product tour and that should be enough to test and demonstrate it okay so you can see we've got this nice centralized uh, pop-up effectively on our page uh, and it says welcome welcome to my app and then with done um, but you'll notice that it's not attached to any elements on the page uh, so to do that, uh, I need to go into design and I want to highlight chart one, this box, which uh, I could have a, some chart data in or anything in my app that I wanted to highlight to the user. Uh, and I begin by adding in an ID attribute. If you can't see the ID attribute box at the bottom, you need to go into settings, general, scroll all the way down to the bottom and make sure you have checked, expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. That is what will allow you to have this box at the bottom. So I've put in here step underscore one. I'm going to add in another step. And I'll call this one step one. And I'll say check out this chart. And here's where I put in the ID attribute step one. Notice that. Uh, I'm basically queuing up my steps all before the final action in the workflow, which is to start the product tour. So let's preview that. There's my welcome, my general one, not attached to any element in particular. And there is my second step, uh, which is attached to this group here. I'm going to uh, do a couple of things with the style just to improve it. So uh, I'm going to make the roundness 12 make the padding four. And that's because my app here, I've got some roundness around my elements. I've got this nice contrast between the white and the gray. Let's refresh it. And I'm now getting what looks like quite a nice soft border effect around my element. Let's do that for one more. So I'm going to copy and paste the step. Call this step two. Go back to my design. Uh, and uh, let's highlight a uh, chart too. So on chart, I add in the ID attribute. Uh, so that is step underscore two. And uh, let's run that. Okay. So you can see I'm gradually beginning to build up this lovely, uh, really user-friendly product tour for my bubble app. 
Um, now, what if I wanted to show them chart one, chart two, but then I wanted to draw their attention to orders? Well, that takes a little bit of extra work, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So uh, I would begin by going into my elements, go to orders, and then I want to highlight just this box here, list, in fact, uh, yeah, let's go list of orders. And so I've already added in step underscore three. Now this isn't going to work, but I'm going to demonstrate what happens and explain why it's happening. So let's make this step three. Uh, look at these orders and then have that as three. Like I say, this is not going to work, but I'm going to explain what's going on. So, so far, so good. But then step three isn't successfully anchoring itself to an element on the page. And that's because we've not actually uh, changed the custom state that dictates that orders is being displayed. And so actually the element step underscore three is not part of the page at the moment. It's not being shown. So it cannot be linked to uh, by our uh, this step here in our workflow. So to do that, I need to make use of another action that comes from the plugin. And that is the um, a product tool goes to a step. And so I would say when this product tool, current step index, and I'd count off from here, one, two, three, four, is four, I need to change my custom state. And what I'm doing is effectively what my, my uh, if I was to click on one of the links here, I set state on my page, state is of view. View is an option set, which has got dashboard orders and settings as the option set values. And I'm just flicking through them using my, my menu navigation. So I need to set state here. Okay, this is still not gonna work but it's worth demoing. Okay, we see we're moving on to orders, but we're still not successfully attaching step three to the element on the page we wish to anchor it to. To do that, we basically need to create a pause in our workflow. And we don't use the, the, the pause workflow uh, action uh, instead, we can just create another product tool, another product tool set. And so I'm going to call, call, this, call this pause. And it doesn't need to have these values in it. It's effectively a step in our workflow. So that by the time that we've got uh, current step is four, we go one, two, three, four. Then we fire this workflow and then after that, we draw attention to the object on the page we've yet to arrive to. Um, and I need to add in one extra step here, which is uh, go to next product tool. So we go one, two, three, four, spring to here, change the custom state. This takes us to five. Let's try it. And there you go. We've successfully navigated to another page within our one page app. Okay. Um, let's just explore some other options that you can uh, experiment with, with this plugin. So we can change the primary color. Uh, so let's change this to a, a green and uh, let's change the overlay. Uh, to say 20% uh, instead. Uh, and we'll also say that when the user clicks outside of our pop-ups, our steps, uh, we want nothing to happen. We want to ensure that our user goes through um, our steps uh, without being distracted or taken off task. Okay, now we can see our primary color has been updated. If I click out, nothing happens. So there you have it. There is a demonstration of the 
a plus onboarding product tour by Cranford Tech. Um, we demonstrated how you can really easily, uh, in 10 minutes or less, add in uh, multiple steps of product tour. Uh, something that if you were to use group focus uh, and kind of build this all manually using bubble elements, uh, it would take you so much longer. So this is such a time saver. Um, and we've even shown you how to use custom states uh, within the steps of the plugin workflow uh, to be able to take you between different pages in your one page app.